coding made easy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to your next C++ SFML 2.0 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to be learning a more complex way on loading maps. Now, um, it's not really much more complex. It's just adding in a few different things to what we did last tutorial. Uh, in my opinion, it's a fairly easy add, and you guys shouldn't have any trouble with this. So what we're gonna do is we're in, gonna include the string stream, the S stream, which stands for string stream. Now, if you don't know about string streams, a quick Google search. I will be making a tutorial on it on my C++ Made Easy HD tutorial series, but uh, it's just like a stream, like a file stream or um, the C out or like the input output stream, something like that. But instead of that, it just takes in a string in the stream. And we're gonna need that for, uh, um, in, in just a second. So what we're gonna do now is if we open up uh, right here what we do is that we um, Get it we get a value until each space right and then we we do whatever we need to do with it But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the whole line and then we're gonna split it by the spaces And when we split it then we're gonna do certain stuff with it. Okay um, So this is how we're gonna do it so we have our string right there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add something called value and we're gonna make a string stream and we'll just call this stream or actually we'll make that after. So right here, uh, we're gonna call std get line and we're gonna put open file in there and put str in there. So whatever's in that file, whatever's in that line is gonna be stored in string. And then we're gonna make a string stream and we'll call it stream and we'll store the value str in there okay so once that value is stored in there we're gonna make a while loop okay and in this while loop we're gonna say forget line and we're going to put in our stream put in value and we're gonna put a space right in there okay so what this is gonna do is that it's going to loop through our stream. So what we did is stored our line. So we're gonna get this line right here. It stores our line in our stream. And for every single time we reach a space, it's going to split, it's gonna crop out that, whatever that value is, store it in value, and then we can do whatever we wanna do with it in this while loop. So for example, we're gonna get this line. Let's say we copy this line and put it down here. So this is our str variable. So what it's gonna do is gonna, is once it reaches a space, it's gonna take this value, cut it, I guess, and store it in value. Do whatever we need to do with it. It's gonna go back to the top of the while loop. It's gonna take this value, cut it, place it in a value, do whatever we need to do with it. And then we'll do that for our whole line and then we can um, store it accordingly. So what we're gonna do here is, um, for what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, uh, let's make two, let's make a, a string called x, two x's or something. And we're gonna say it's equal to value dot substring from zero to value dot find and we'll look for the comma and then we're gonna make another string called yy and we'll say value dot substring and we'll go from value dot find um, plus value dot find the comma and uh, that will be it, should be value. Sorry, so what this is gonna do is that it's gonna take, uh, for our first value, it's gonna go here, it's going to, however long this is, so this could be this long, right? It's gonna take the values from zero all the way to the comma, get that, and we're gonna do something with it. And then after the comma, right it's gonna get that it should be value dot find plus one sorry so after it's gonna get the value from the from the comma all the way to the space to the end of it and then we're gonna get it from here and we're gonna get the values in there so before 
the problem was is that we could only input a value from like say zero to nine because it all we stored it in a character we stored it in, as a char and a char can only be a single value so with this method now we can get all the values or however large the number may be and that is a huge benefit for us so now that uh we've got the individual values we want to check to see if um if they indeed are numbers or if they're not because they're not numbers then we'll set it to negative one and a lot of people are like okay why don't we just set it to negative one in the text file you can very well do that uh but the reason why i've done it with like x and stuff like that is just for alignment issues for example um for these values from zero through nine they're all um they're all single values. Now, if I was to change all of these to negative one, negative one, and so on and so forth, it's not really aligned properly, and therefore it kind of looks ugly, and you can't visually see what you want. With this method, uh, it's aligned properly, and so on and so forth. And let's say, for example, we want to say like all of these were tens, or and we put like zero, zero here, and we put ten, and and all that stuff there then instead of having one single x we could have two x's right we could do whatever we want to do or two letters or whatever to align it properly so with this method here it's just for alignment issues um just just so we can have a good visual representation of what we actually want to do okay and just add this right here so um now that now that we've got that settled now we have to actually check if it's a number so what we're going to do now is we're just going to make an int x a y a i and a j okay and what we're going to do is we're going to say for i equals zero not int i but i equals zero i is x uh, is less than x x dot length and i plus plus and what we're going to do is we're going to say that if um if is digits xxi or if not if not is digit xx um i so if one of the characters is not a digit we'll just put break and we're going to do another for loop oh but it's going to be j equals zero not int j so it's going to be j equals zero y y dot length j plus plus then we'll say if not is digit y y i break okay so what this is gonna do is it's gonna loop until it doesn't find a digit and it's gonna break and if it does find it if all of the numbers are digits then that's it that's that okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say that x is equal to if i is equal to xx dot length then x will be equal to atoi xx underscore c string else it will be equal to negative one and y will be equal to j is equal to length question mark symbol or ternary operator sorry and we'll put negative one okay so what is going on here so we'll say x is equal to and this is just like an if statement just look at it as an if statement so we'll say if i is equal to the length of x that means we're gonna set it we're gonna convert it atoi converts the string to an integer so we're gonna convert that string to an integer if it is not equal to the length then we're gonna set it to negative one and same for the y so why did i compare this inside here well, what this is going to do is it's going to set i equal to zero. It's going to keep on looping. If all of them are digits, then by the end of this for loop, i should be equal to the length of xx, correct? And at the end of this loop, if all of them are digits, which means it never hit break, then j should be equal to the length of yy. So if it is equal to it, then we know all of them are digits, and then we can safely convert it to the correct number. If i is not equal to it, which means it's less than it, that means we just set to negative one because at least one of the digits is a new is not a numerical character, okay? And uh, that's how it's gonna work. So after we do this, what we're gonna do is we just have to say temp map dot pushback sf vector two i and we just put x and y. 
simple enough. So now we can we can get rid of all of this stuff right here and get rid of this out here. And uh, this should work um, correctly. So if we test this out, let's see if it actually works. So it is not working. It's not showing us um, what we want to to display. So let's check this for a second. Okay. Well, there was something I, I did forget, and it's it might it will probably be the reason why. And what we're gonna do is just put after this uh, second while loop, we're gonna put if value dot length is greater than zero, and we'll just encapsulate it in here. And let's run this. Hmm, that is not the reason. Oh, right here, I put I in here. This should be J. So let's check this again. So voila, this is working the way it should be. Now I would put if value dot length is greater than zero in there. The reason why is for, let's say for example, your designer or you accidentally put some spaces here. We have some trailing spaces there and we save that, right? Uh, when we run it, it won't matter if the trailing spaces are there because it's not going to account for those because the even if it stores it, the value is not going to be greater than zero and therefore this stuff won't be executed until we actually get a value. So I would advise that you actually put that in. So uh, that is it for this tutorial. Um, it, it was relatively... Uh, relatively easy relatively simple if you have any questions don't be afraid to post on my forum or comment below or anything uh don't forget to sign up on my website uh there's a lot of cool new features the source codes up there everything's up there so don't forget to check that out um don't forget to follow me on twitter like on facebook like on google plus and, and all that ish so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it uh don't forget to comment and subscribe and bye for now